I think we will get started. Um, I am Jamie Marshall. Welcome, everyone. I'm the executive director of St. Louis Park Friends of the Arts, and I'm really pleased to have all of you here with us. I'm really looking forward to this conversation with a couple of great Twin Cities artists about their backgrounds and their creative businesses and what it's like to run them during this global pandemic. Um, so everyone's mics are muted, um, so we'll have a, as clear of a connection here as possible. Um, but please do use the chat function. Um, we won't be able to necessarily read body language like we would be able to in uh, a room all together. So if something resonates with you um, or if something is funny, put it in the chat so we can uh, try to sort of get a read on the room. Um, and please also use that to submit questions. We'll have time either throughout the conversation or at the end um, for some questions from the audience. So please do um, put any questions in there and I'll keep an eye on them and um, be sure to make time at the end to ask those. Um, so Friends of the Arts is a nonprofit uh, building community through the arts in St. Louis Park. We support and celebrate artists. Um, we bring arts into public spaces like streets and parks and we bring people together for arts and culture activities and, and create meaningful connections uh, like this, whether in person or online. Um, so thanks to everyone who supports Friends of the Arts to make things like this possible. Um, so I will introduce the first artist that we have with us this evening, Jamie Chismer, a freelance designer and photographer specializing in branding, content and social strategy, and interactive web design. Jamie is also the founder of All Are Welcome Here, a woman-owned Minnesota-based business founded on the simple idea of respect and compassion for all. They make beautiful products that promote a more welcoming world, and they give a portion of all sales back to organizations that do the same. So welcome, Jamie, great name. And uh, why don't you tell us where you are sheltered in place and who you're with? Um, thank you, Jamie, and thank you for everyone who's just taken time out of their day. It's beautiful out, and you just came in to like do another Zoom meeting. That's so amazing. Um, I am sheltering in place in my home with my husband and my eight-year-old, um, who's also an artist. And um, this is the original um, headquarters of Super Deluxe, my freelance design business, and also of All Are Welcome Here. Um, Right, currently it is my husband's uh, office. I'm upstairs now homeschooling and he has this crazy chair. I'm just letting you know our floor slant backwards. So I do this. So I'm just, if I start to move, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yes, I'm sheltering in place at my house and it's gardening season. And so I am pretty pumped that some of my artistic uh, creativity can be put out into the plants. So nice to meet everyone. Thanks for being here. That's fabulous, thank you. Um, the other artist we have with us is Greta McLean. Greta has over 15 years of mural making experience, which she has spent exploring the ways that art can bring communities together, the power of visual language to activate voice, and the potential of art as a vehicle for hands-on organizing and educating. She's traveled to South America and to Europe, studying new and traditional techniques, and created projects across the country and internationally in Argentina, Mexico, Cuba, and France. Greta earned her Bachelor of Arts from the University of California, Davis, and returned home for her MFA at Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And she would later start her business, Good Space Murals, here in Minneapolis. Greta's commitment to the Twin Cities can be seen through more than 30 murals and 50 community projects here. And a plug for St. Louis Park, she's currently working on a mural with her Good Space team uh, in the historic Walker Lake Business District in St. Louis Park. So welcome, Greta, great to have you. And same question, where and uh, with whom are you sheltering in place? Awesome, thanks for having me. Um, shelter in place is like, you don't leave your house, right? That's what that means. Like we're not like, shelter in place is like, that's it, you're done. Like I'm sheltering in my house, but I still go to my studio. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say, I'm at my house. I still spend a lot of time in my house, um, but I go to my studio on my, uh, the Good Space Studio on my non-parenting days, um, but I am sheltering with my six-year-old, Sunny, um, and also doing all that homeschool stuff. So, you know, combo, combo time. Awesome. Well, um, I think, Jamie, let's start with you. You mentioned you're in the original headquarters of your um, design business, Super Deluxe, um, as well as All Are Welcome here. Could you tell us kind of where 
your creative or artistic career is at now and a little outline of, of maybe how you got to, to where you are? Um, okay, first I'm just gonna fangirl Greta really quickly because I love your murals and I love everything you do. And in fact, I met her because Hopkins West did a mural that combined good space and all are welcome here. And I don't know if you know that, but I'm trying to email it to you <laughs> right now because it's a beautiful mural. And you know, one of the things I love, this kind of segues into my work, but it talks a lot about um, Greta's work in Good Space. But um, I went to the opening event and what I thought was so amazing about this event was how that mural brought the whole school together. Like everyone designed, everyone drew, everyone made a little piece of it and it just made their community stronger. And I thought that was just so incredible. So I just want to fangirl you here really quickly <laughs> to just say how awesome you are. And like, now I'm gonna try to send this mural to you, Jamie, while you're talking. So if I'm not paying attention, it's not that I'm being rude. Um, geez. Uh, so I started out as a photographer. Um, that's how Jamie and I met. Um, and then I fell in love with the internet. Um, I'm old, uh, <laughs> I fell in love with the internet in the late 90s when anyone could build a website. Um, I was studying photography from a journalism background and a fine arts background and um, fell in love with the internet and my first job was at the Star Tribune. So I worked on their website and did a ton of different projects and one of the things I love about journalism is storytelling. And I think that's a really strong thing that Greta's murals do is they tell really good stories in a visual way. Um, and I think that's what a really good photograph does. And I think that's um, kind of the intention too behind All Are Welcome here is, um, you know, the sign, I'm a designer, um, the sign was just sort of created literally like in my basement. Um, I wanted to make a sign to show support for my neighbors. And I put it out on Facebook and asked if anyone wanted to go in on a box of 50. And this really sweet <laughs> woman who I later met at a, at a, at a, a pickup event said, you know, you're going to need to put a few more zeros onto that. And I thought she was crazy and it just kept going. And so I feel like what All Our Welcome Here does when we're at our best is we help amplify the stories of other people um, in our community. And we use our design resources and our connections and our enthusiasm and our optimism to sort of amplify what other organizations are doing. And so some of our favorite orgs have been um, International Institute of Minnesota, um, ACLU. Um, right now we're doing an auction for NAMI Minnesota, which is um, a nonprofit that offers um, free and low-cost mental health services to um, adults and kiddos and their families. So um, it's, it's kind of interesting. Storytelling, that's kind of what I do. Um, but yeah, it was basically get out of college, work at the Star Tribune, take a buyout, go freelance, um, freelance for almost uh, 10 years, build a lawn sign, and all of a sudden, you just hold on to this crazy viral thing and here we are. So nice to meet everyone. That's great, thank you. Um, it's definitely been uh, fun to watch that, that sign just sort of explode and show up everywhere. Um, Greta, how about you? Um, I mentioned a little bit of some of the places you've studied um, in, the, in the bio. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be where you are? Yeah. So um, I, I was like, what do you mean when you send this and you were like, so where are you at in your career? And I was like, so what, like mid-career? Like, what are we going, like, um. So uh, I think like at this point, I'm at this place where like I've had this, where, you know, I've been living, doing, um, living off of muralism, being a muralist full time for like eight years now. So um, I studied muralism in college. I studied and like figured out like how to do like sort of about like a study of muralism and also really a deep study of myself and my type of making um, in grad school and have used that just to sort of um, always try to figure out how to serve my community and who I'm from. Like I realized, especially when I was in grad school that I'm just super not comfortable or very interested in hanging out by myself in my studio. Um, and that what I want to be doing is painting and making with my friends and that I want to be making something that I can stand back and be like, isn't this awesome? Look what we made. And that that's like basically like we have like a, a pretty vision and mission statement that I want to share later, but that's basically like the mission, like look what we made together. 
and isn't this amazing and how do we celebrate and use our art um, as a, a different kind of tool for connecting um, so at this point I've been able to just like work and um, and basically be an assistant or jump onto projects with a bunch of different artists um, working you know in California and Mexico Argentina with different artists that have taken me on as their assistants or as their collaborators um, and kind of gotten this makeshift mural um, you know education that I've gotten to bring back to Minneapolis so it's been really fun to anchor here and to work with so many organizations here um, I don't know and we're still going I don't, it's kind of like a dream every day you're like what I get to do this I still get to pay with my friends um, so I'm still just really pumped on this and I think just like Jamie was saying like that idea of like what really this is working you, you're into this continues to be that that motivator of like shoot as long as there's like that big universal yes that keeps showing up I will keep showing up so um, that's sort of again a thing that I've been following this whole this whole time and I think um, Minneapolis and, and the Minnesota uh, just like creative community is really open to that like people have responded really well to that and no one's questioned like no one even in my family questions like is this your job and I think that's like a really, uh, that's a supportive piece too. Shouldn't you be a lawyer by now? I don't know, like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, you're both visual artists and probably the best way to um, communicate that is to just show some of your work. So I've got some photos that I will um, share on my screen here that everyone will be able to see. Uh, the first ones I'm gonna share are photos of Jamie's that were just recently on display in our um, St. Louis Park and Golden Valley Artist Showcase that we had um, at Brookview Golden Valley just a couple of months ago um, where we had 500 people in a space looking at artwork on the wall which was really great and a romantic idea at this point um, but I will show those and Jamie uh, if you want to just say a little bit about what we're looking at and kind of you know this is I guess sort of like fine art compared to some of your design work if you want to talk a little bit about those differences. <laughs> wow. Um, you know, it's really funny you bring these up because it was the first time in 20 years I had submitted anything to a show and it was super great to do it. And I owe it, um, my friend Heather, I basically said to her, oh my gosh, your work is so great. You should enter. And she's like, well, what are you entering? And I thought, I have to enter something? <laughs> so I did. Um, this is the first one and it's, um, Actually, they're leftover chrysalis of monarch butterflies that my daughter and I um, raise. And I have, I didn't do it for this show, but had I submitted something for the state fair, I just wanted to make this chrysalis like as big as humanly possible. It's just sort of as a, as a metaphor of just how like we all change in really unexpected ways. And I just always have this dialogue in my head of like, what would a caterpillar say to a butterfly or the butterfly say to the caterpillar like guess what you're gonna learn how to speak spanish and you're gonna fly to mexico and like the caterpillar is like no man i'm just gonna eat milkweed you know so i just so that's the first one is just sort of this idea of what's left behind when you go through like a huge personal transformation um the second it's more of a documentary style but that's my grandpa arlen um he passed away earlier this year but i just loved this particular image of him because that day he was sharp and he was so hilarious he's like 95 that's me and he was keeping those girls at bay like stopping them from blowing out those candles it was awesome and then the other photo you have is just um, my daughter Evelyn um, I actually took that with my iPhone um, and she was just running around with her umbrella on a rainy day and I just thought the motion blur was was really nice so um, so yeah, those were the three I submitted. It was, I was really glad for the opportunity. So um, thank you for the Friends of the Arts for working with Golden Valley for doing that. Um, and then here's All Are Welcome Here. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a sign, I'm sure you've seen it. <laughs> I live in a rainbow. <laughs> so um, this is a photo that I took um, at Twin Cities World Refugee Day. Um, all are welcome here. We do a lot of events and one of our favorite things we do at events, you know, sometimes we just don't sell things. Sometimes we just show up and we create this postcard event where people um, write images or write postcards of welcome to immigrants and refugees. And these were so beautiful and it, it had this like beautiful effect if you saw it from a distance. It was just all these clotheslines with rainbows on one side and 
messages on the other and people were so generous and so welcoming. Um, it's one of my favorite projects to, to do. We've done it several times. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it's just like, um, you know, all are welcome here is one of those things I'm sure Greta can talk about this too, is that, you know, you do something that you love and you don't, you, you get you get paid back in like warm fuzzies and just goodness and seeing the goodness of people coming together and that's definitely what all are welcome here does and this is kind of a funny thing i was kind of um surprised that jamie put this in here but um i have a very strong background in uh data visualization and design and i've done a lot of interesting work again for the star tribune and also npr and uh apm uh, i'm sorry american public media reports um, here's the thing I did on climate change, but I also did a bunch of uh, data visualizations and graphics for um, a podcast about Jacob Wetterling um, and also about Curtis Flowers, who was a man who a lot of people think was wrongfully convicted of, of murder. And now he is, I, he's, he's walking free, which is amazing because the Curtis Flowers story kind of gets into a lot of um, social justice issues, but um, both the reports, um, I was really honored to just, you know, that they wanted my visual design to help with some of them. So, so yeah, that's kind of my career. <laughs> I'm kind of a Jill of all trades. <laughs> well, I put this in here, Jamie, like, I think it's so important, especially now as we're dealing with things like this coronavirus and all this data that is overwhelming and hard to consume and understand and view, um, and climate just the same. And so I think it's really important to think about the power of arts and what artists can bring to things like this to help people see and understand in a in a more clear way. So this is, you know, one image that um, I thought represented that nicely. Um, so I think the next ones are your stuff, Greta. So tell us what we're looking at. So this is the Lindale um, Community School mural. And we did this at Lindale School um, over on, I think it's on like 34th and Grand but in, um, I think it's called the Lindale, the Lindale Neighborhood. And um, we worked with the, Lab the Lindale Neighborhood Association to make this and every student in this school. And when we were working with these students, I mean, we, we um, worked with over a thousand people to make this mural. Um, and it, it's pretty magical just in, in what it represents, that many hands coming together. So our, um, you can even go to the next slide, our, the big, I mean, one of our big uh, exciting things that Good Space does is that we use an indirect mural technique, which allows us to bring the making to the community. So um, in this picture, you kind of get a sense of what a paint party looks like, where we make it just like a simple paint by number and invite the community to come and paint with us. So for that Lindale mural, every single student painted, almost every parent painted. We had a community event in the park um, up the street from the school, and we had um, a free meal that went with it and a band playing. And I think at that event, there was like 500 people that came through. So even though um, a lot of times these murals, like maybe all these participants aren't doing big high art making they're touching this piece and kind of what what this is all about isn't really even the, the art it's the art of um, creating community or celebrating what community looks like um, and then this is another piece that we made this one was also done using um, indirect mural techniques you can see this one was done on boards um, this is over on Lake Street and um, 12th and it's, I was so honored. I'm, I was raised only a couple blocks from Lake Street and to get to do a mural and call it our, you know, our Lake Street loves. Um, this mural is actually called, um, What is the Darkness? Or, and it, there's a quote on it. And let me see if I can even read it because I don't even remember it. Um, so it says, what if this darkness is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb? And I think that's like a lot of what we try to look at of like, what are we making? What are we, um, you know, what, what is this moment? If this is hard, what are we becoming? And, and kind of a little bit like, is this our chrysalis moment? Because are we about to become a butterfly? Because I'm about it, right? Like that's always where, um, where we're going. So like, let's, if we are about to spread our wings, like this might be the hard time. And if this is the hard time, let's celebrate and move into that transition. Um, and these are also these great spaces that, um, you know, they, they talk about creative place making. Um, and we do a lot of cre creative um, place keeping. Um, you know, just like another way of, of talking about like lifting up the stories and the people that are already um, there that are already happening, but putting them on the walls so that people can see themselves. And there are these great places where we can have celebrations and, um, 
and they can continue to be activators of community. And this, Jamie, what's this? <laughs> so we, uh, there's a business district in St. Louis Park called Historic Walker Lake. Um, Walker and Lake are the two streets that intersect and there's a lot of new activity and things going on there. And so um, we put a team together to um, create a mural that will sort of signal to people that, hey, there's something here. It's sort of a hard little area to find and not a lot of people necessarily know that there's all this cool stuff there. Sheila, who's in the room here, um, has her artist studio, Monkey Bridge Arts there. There's like a kids, uh, a youth high school coffee shop and like creative space. And so, um, yeah, we, we asked Greta to capture the story. Um, this is also the historic center of St. Louis Park. So I hope that it's clear in this image, maybe you can talk about that too. What, what, I know you, when we first approached you for this project, you said, we don't do historical murals. And I was like, well, this is historic Walker Lake and it's gonna need to communicate that this is a historic, as historic of a, of a place as there gets in St. Louis Park. Um, so can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so when we said we don't do history murals, we're like, we don't do timelines. It's just like, we've never been, someone's like, oh, I have an idea. How about you do a sepia tone timeline? And I'm like, Ooh, I just don't know how to do that. That's not our, not our jam, you know? Um, but I need like some infographics or something. I mean, like there could have been, I was like, anyway. Um, but this, it was really a fun challenge to think about like, okay, what is the history of this place? I love history. The fact that I'm not doing a bunch of history murals is funny because I actually love history and learning about different places. Um, and so we, look, we, we, we got to kind of dive into what is the history of just this little spot. And, um, and you see here, like some of our, our friends, like Mr. Walker, if you want to put your like um, little scroller thing over Mr. Walker, he's there. Um, you know, there were, we like looked at it like the lumber industry, the, the role of the, um, the railroad, um, you know, this idea, it's, it's, it's sweet, this, this welcoming sign that St. Louis Park was one of like the first communities that um, really welcomed the Jewish community in, um, in a time when the Jewish community was being picked out of a lot of places or feeling unwelcome than other places in the area. So this all are welcome is kind of beautiful to think like here we have like St. Louis Park, of course, is a place that's been historically welcoming. Um, so that's fun. Um, and then this is kind of what it's been looking like in our, in our studio. So this is happening right now. We did one pretty big, pretty really cold day um, paint party. We had a lot of people that were there, um, but now we're like shifting into the studio time because our paint parties have been canceled. They have indeed. And, and we'll, we'll get into some more <clears throat> sort yeah. of COVID, um, how that's affecting things. I did want to ask um, Greta, so your, your, you mentioned like you're, you develop your personal style of muralism in school and you've said um, in some of your writing about your work that you have a background in Chicano muralism and I can see looking at your pieces like a Latin American influence in the work and I'm curious if you could talk about what what I'm seeing when I sense that influence and what sort of you know maybe your background or, or how does that come through in your work? Yeah so I don't have a background in Chicano muralism but I have a great um, a great teacher who was a very influential Chicano artist. Um, so, so, but even backing up via, like before that, um, I'm from this cohort of students that went through this amazing program at Ramsey International Fine Arts School in South Minneapolis. Um, and in that program, there was a bunch of us kids and we started learning Spanish in kindergarten through um, these different classes that taught us Spanish through traditional arts and traditional song from all over Latin America. So, you know, traditional, those, those kind of, those arts, those, those, um, that, that, those colors, those textures were part of, um, of my upbringing because that's what, we, when we were like learning Spanish and learning, this was like part of how we learned how to make. Um, another piece that you might see too is that I was also raised in Powderhorn neighborhood. So I, every year going to the Heart of the Beast um, May Day parade workshops. So that idea of like making with a group of people, that's definitely part of my history. But then I ended up landing in California and I was like, I think that there's like muralists here. And I ended up in a class that was a, a Chicano, a survey of Chicano art class, my very first semester of my very first year of college. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what Chicano meant at that time. Um, and 
and I walked into this class. I just knew I wanted to make murals. So I walked into this class and this professor, Malakias Montoya, he like opened me up to this whole history of um, kind of the identity politics movement that had really like started in the Bay Area in California, how um, art had really been taken on as a tool for social change um, and social activism um, and political activism during the 60s and 70s. He was one of the principal um, artists that worked with Cesar Chavez um, in the United Farm Workers Union. Um, and so he, and he adopted me. I don't know why, but again, when you, when you, when you follow your divine, yes. Right. So he was like this one. And I was like this one. And, um, we started working together and, um, he really influenced my, the why, the why I make. Um, and I think he continues to be my barometer in some ways of like, you know, people like ask their question of what would whoever do that's important to you. And one of mine is like, what would Malakias do? So there's always this question of like, um, you know, what, not only is this bringing color and life to the community, but is it also lifting people? Is it also um, showcasing what is important right now? Is it bringing hope? Um, and a lot of the work that was done during the um, Chicano Power Movement and continues to be part of that tradition is very, was very pointedly political. Um, and I think, and, and very much like a, a social critique in a lot of ways. And I think our work, um, Good Spaces work, is um, very much a, a, a celebration always. So it does that, that, that um, social critique, but always through this lens of celebration. What is good? Where are we going? How do we pull everyone into this? Whose stories are not being told right now? How do we lift them up? Um, but there's always this, sometimes they're not, I don't know if you look back at some of the, um, some of those murals, even if you think of like Los Tres Grandes from Mexico, I also studied muralism then in Mexico City. So I think you can see that also in the work. Um, and then I ended up going down to Argentina and studying there. So I think a lot of that influence is obviously in this work. Those colors are there. Um, but there's also the, I was also adopted, I've been adopted by some people. I was also scooped by artists in Philadelphia. So if you're familiar with the Philadelphia Mural Arts Program, um, and they also kind of um, hone some of the ways that I think about, about muralism and design and the painterliness of things. Um, so that might be kind of some of the stuff that you see, but in a lot of ways, this work is very, um, Minnesotan too. Definitely. Right? So I like the, the mix of all those things. Jamie, how about you? Do you feel like your sort of background, your upbringing, um, your cultural background has influenced the work or the work of All Are Welcome here? How did you end up there from like your, um, I don't know, your personal interests or, or what, what drew you to that kind of work? Um, you know, it was really, really funny because I originally went to college, I was going to be a doctor and I thought, oh, the best way I can give back to the world is to, is through medicine. And <laughs> I had this, like, it was registration, it was orientation. And I had this like telltale heart moment where like, have you guys ever had that moment where like, you can feel your own heart beating in your chest and it is telling you what you are doing is so wrong, like so wrong. And so I said, I, I, in this bit of all these pre-med people, I was like, I'm an, I'm an artist. And they all looked at me and they're like, you're in the wrong meeting. I'm like, I know. <laughs> so, so I left and I, um, you know, I, it's, it's interesting because originally I went through English and then via English, I ended up journalism. And I'm one of these people who doesn't take no for an answer. And I loved what you said, which was, um, Greta, follow your divine yes. And, um, you know, I was in Duluth, I had studied photography, and I knew I wanted to be a photojournalist. I knew I wanted to take photos of, uh, that showed our community, um, showed stories in our community that you wouldn't always see. And so I went to the University of Minnesota just as they were closing down their photojournalism program. And I kept going to Linda Lindholm's office every day going, hey, hey, remember me? Can I get in the photojournalism like, program? And I bugged her so much, she finally let me do it. And, and I, kept, I kept shooting and I kept shooting and I loved it to pieces. But then, you know, the web came and it wasn't just about still images anymore. It was like, how do you make images move? How do you share them with more people? Because like, I, I think that's what the internet is at its best, is if we share the best of ourselves with everyone. And I do feel like right now, there is like, there's a lot of, like, I hate Twitter for all sorts of reasons. 
but I love Instagram because Instagram, I always feel like there's beautiful, uplifting stories and there's great work. And I see work from all over like the world. I follow photographers from Africa, people who are in the Antarctic, people who are everywhere. And it's just like, you know, the storytelling continues in a way that's really positive and uplifting and in a way to just bring awareness to issues that you may not necessarily encounter in your everyday life. So, um, so the internet was like this great, wonderful thing. And being at the Star Tribune, I felt like I was at this like incubator and we, one of my favorite projects was we, um, Liberians um, in Minnesota, you know, they had fled a genocidal war situation and they were here on a temporary protected visa. And I worked with some of these amazing photographers at the Star Tribune and we made this interactive piece that ended up winning an Emmy and it ended up helping their case for them to stay here and live the lives that they had made here. And that's, I think, when journalism is at its best, right? Like that's when we're at our best, when we take all of our skills and our creativity and like, like Greta said, our ability to work together. And I just remember like Jerry Holt, who's an award-winning photographer at the Star Tribune. And I said, Jerry, I want more photos. I want more photos in this piece and I will make you like a gallery. I will stay here late over time to make sure your awesome photos get out. And afterwards, he's like, I've never had anyone at the paper care so much about my images as you do. And I'm like, because I know what it took to get them. I mean, it's, it's really hard. So um, I feel like all are welcome here is just sort of this, you know, I think Greta can probably speak to this. Like when you have an experience where you are welcomed by all these different groups of people who share their stories with you, who open their hearts and, and trust you with like something that's core to who they are. You, I totally lost my train of thought. Ah! <laughs> when they, when you, 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 you want, you, you don't, you, when you're open to all of these things, it's like, this is where all our welcome here came from. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, you've been welcome to all of these places and you when you see policies that hurt the people who who you love and adore you'll do anything and i have to tell you how satisfying it is to take a lawn sign and literally <coughs> put that sucker in the ground and just say literally like staking out your claim and saying it's here and i'm sure that's what it must feel like to literally paint a building to mark it forever to be like we're here, we did this thing, we're together and, you know, we see you and the fact that we see you and we work together means we can work together to make some of this other stuff go away. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, is, does that answer your question? Well, it's, it's beautiful whether, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's well said. And I, I think, um, I want to, I want to transition and make sure we spend enough time talking about, um, the situation that we're in now. And you both, um, you both are artists yourselves and photographers and, and painters, but you also started creative businesses. You're not just Greta McLean painter. You're not just Jamie Chismer photographer. Like you have businesses and that, you know, things operate a little more different than um, if you were just a freelancer on your own. So I guess my first question is what, what was the, the reason, and maybe Greta, you can speak to this. Um, what was the reason you, you started Good Space Murals as opposed to just being a freelance muralist. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't really realize that it happened all the way. You know, when you're like, oh, I've started a business. Um, but I know why it happened. I didn't know, I mean, it was hard to realize it happened, but I know why it happened. Um, so it kind of came out of sort of awarenesses that were coming in in like 2014, 2015. Um, I was doing a bunch of murals and had actually moved to Delaware um, to follow my uh, ex-husband, husband at the time, to do some work in, in Delaware. And he, um, and I was trying to run the studio from Delaware here in Minnesota. And I realized like, oh man, this is way more than me. There's all these artists that work with me and have worked with me. I had this amazing, at the time, um, it was Jackie Rosenbush, who's still working with me, and Clau Valentino, who's not anymore, but doing other kinds of work. And um, we, I was like, these are, this is just more, way more than me. And making it and opening up, it feels like giving it a name like Good Space Murals opens it up for so many more people to own it. 
Um, and we officially became Good Space Murals in 2016 um, when I was working with my former business partner, Candida Gonzalez. And that was also in order to sort of highlight like the part of community organizing that was so important and vital to what we wanted to do. That ultimately Good Space Murals is way more than a mural um, that is often designed um, at the end of the day by me. But it's like, but it's way more than that. It's this opportunity for people to, to, to champion something, to celebrate something, to claim that they are part of a community. And this mural can almost be like their sign or their flag. So getting out, of, it was like a way to get out of the way and say, okay, we want more and more people to be able to claim what we are creating in this good space. So that's why, why we did it. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and so Jamie, you also, I mean, you have Super Deluxe as your sort of graphic design um, business, but obviously All Are Welcome here is, you know, a business of its own as well. Um, how has the current situation, this pandemic, shifted the way that you think about All Are Welcome here or your, your mission or your duty as, a, as this business um, in this moment in light of what we're all going through? So it's really funny because with social distancing, the whole idea of all are welcome here <laughs> seems kind of <laughs> counterintuitive. Um, all are welcome six feet away, you know, um, but I, you know, just what's going on in our current political system where immigrants and refugees now are being unfairly targeted. I mean, the message I think still has meaning and it means a lot to um, a lot of people, um, you know. It's interesting because as a designer and a photographer, you know, it's it's hard to tell people. I think that's why I ended up calling myself Super Deluxe. The other thing I was going to name my business was General Specifics because people just don't know what to do with me because it's like, yeah, I can make you a website. Yeah, I can design a kick-ass graphic for you. You want me to make you a lawn sign? I can do that too. And I can take some photos of it, you know, and for a lot of people for a long time, they wanted you to be, I'm sure Greta, this was your thing too. They wanted you to be a specialist in some sort of area. But I feel now with sort of this whole explosion of the gig economy and with, um, uh, with a lot of, a lot of millennials doing, um, uh, um, social 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 entrepreneurship i think the more skills you have actually the, the better you can succeed in in like being a, a like a one man or one woman show um for all are welcome here um you know right now i think for me personally as again as a designer and as a photographer um i had a a colleague that i deeply respected someone who i went to documentary school with who um, who was lost to suicide over the summer. And he was the most successful, talented human being. And I, when I found out about this loss, I mean, it just blew this giant hole in the world that I honestly don't think will ever be filled. And so I think right now where a lot of us artists, like Greta, you're talking about, like a lot of us are collaborators, you know, we're, we don't sit alone, you know, like when I, when I was talking to Sheila, you know, she works at Run 5, she does all these things, like she's interactive, like us as artists, we collaborate. And to be socially isolated like this is really hard. So um, for all are welcome here, I've wanted to do something in support of mental health for artists and support of mental health for creatives, because I think we do um, struggle with that um, in ways and we hide, we're really good at hiding it. And so I think that's why um, we just shifted our focus. We still love the ACLU and we're still going to keep donating to them. But I think this this auction, this online auction we're doing right now for NAMI, which hopefully is going to hit the 10 grand mark is, you know, really important. Um, seemed like a right, flexible thing to do. So for All Are Welcome Here as its own business, keeping it separate from Super Deluxe is really important because All Are Welcome Here can do different things. Um, and our hope is somehow find a way to turn it into a foundation so we can give um, grants, micro grants to organizations like Good Space Murals and <laughs> St. Louis Park Friends of the Arts um, to, to, to keep continuing on this mission of creating spaces that are welcoming for all. Yeah, it sounds like you both, the business kind of emerged when you found a need for it to be bigger than yourself. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, Greta, what new challenges has this pandemic created for you? We mentioned that these paint parties we were going to do together at these big community events have been canceled. Um, what are you doing to to get around that or how is this how's this affected your process? 
So yeah, we, um, it's amazing. What we're really into is getting groups of people together, right? So we were like, oh man, COVID loves that. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. So all of our stuff started getting canceled and we we're in like the, the height of our community make season. Um, so that's really, that's really hard, but there's also, um, you know, but we're all in it together. So there's that feeling too of like, no one here is a, I mean, there's, we can all, I, I do feel so sorry for myself and us and not getting to do what we want to do, but there's also the sense of like, okay, let's, let's continue to, to think about how we can do this differently. Um, so it turns out having uh, an indirect mural technique um, allows you to bring a mural to a lot of people, but it also allows you to isolate with pieces of your mural. Um, and so we have been doing these uh, mural to go kits with a project that we are doing at Anoka Ramsey Community College, where we actually had different, there was two students who had big portraits as part um, of the mural. And we actually like put together like a kit with, with um, their paints, their reference, their piece of canvas, their brushes, did like a safe drop, and they were able to do the painting of their portion in their house. Cool. Um, was super exciting for everyone for me like I was like this is amazing um, and then they sent it back to the studio and we piece it together so there's this amazing oper this amazing opportunity coming up of like if we have to stay isolated is there a way for us to continue to build things together um, so so that's one way we've been thinking about it um, with the with with the mural for St. Louis Park and historic Walker Lake we're looking at um, creating like coloring sheets and I know that they've been doing that in Bloomington and different placemaking kind of organizations are thinking about doing coloring sheets and things like that um, and we're also uh, doing these we're gonna do these different videos that highlight um, some content of the mural what the history is is in what's the story of the mural so I'm really excited about this I feel like it's a way for people to understand um, at a deeper level like what what the mural represents so we're exploring all kinds of things um, and we also are able to still be in our studio um, when it's one at a time. So I don't get to see my team, which really is a bummer, but we leave each other notes and we like, I'm sure we see each other in passing, you know, like, okay, there you go, bye. And then I take over the studio. Um, so we're still trying to, to create, um, but really looking at how can we continue to build with a greater community? Cause we're really excited about that. Yeah, well, I know as I've been thinking about this process in St. Louis Park too, and who knows where we'll be in a couple of months with distancing and everything, but thinking about as we've pushed on with this process and, and our timeline is to have this mural go up in June, that you know we might all be still isolating and this big, beautiful mural will go up on a building that people will start to see and what kind of a statement that makes during this time to see this you know 1,200 square foot mural up here on the side of a building one day or over the course of a couple of weeks or, or whatever. Um, so another, you know, there's been a ton of um, people who have been, who have lost work, unemployment um, claims are at record highs. There's been some um, federal stimulus uh, money available to some businesses, certain types of businesses. Um, Artists are frequently left out of those programs, whether by design or um, falling through the cracks. Jamie, I know you work with a lot of other freelancers on projects. Um, have you been able to navigate any of these programs or what has the kind of financial, you know, implications of all of this meant for you? Well, it's, it was kind of, it's kind of strange. Um, when the crisis first hit, um, one of my good friends, who's an international award-winning chocolatier in Marina on St. Croix, she was having a complete panic that she was going to lose everything. And so I dropped everything to help her uh, get her online presence ready. And actually, she's the one who inspired me to do an auction because she did a Choco auction in order to save her business. And it was really weird because like when we were all sheltering in place that first week, I was on this total, um, it's kind of a newsroom thing, but like you kind of get on this adrenaline high sometimes when you're doing like a, <clears throat> a short turnaround, like tight timeline project. And it wasn't until after her auction went live and she actually made the funds to save her chocolate shop by keeping her operating cost in line that I really started to figure out what to do for myself. 
um, it's, it's tough because a lot of my, the work dried up. And in fact, the last sort of big client I had was, um, Jostens. I used to work for them and they hired me as a photo judge to judge their, um, their yearbook photo competition. And it, it it's been really in, and so that was probably the last thing that I, the big, the last big gig that I had. Um, my husband works for a critical industry. They manage data for trade associations and they're in the middle of redesigning a giant uh, data driven dashboard. So it's a pretty good fit for me, that particular gig, but everything else, you know, it's weird how some of the rules of this are set up because, because I shifted a lot of resources to all are welcome here, super deluxe there wasn't as much uh, billable hours. And so I had a year where I gave a lot to one project that didn't necessarily give me a huge paycheck. And so now if some of these um, loans are dependent upon the income I made in 2019, I'm kind of out of luck. I'm, you know, it's sort of, you know, you sort of cherry pick a random year and sometimes you're way up as a freelancer and sometimes you're kind of wah wah, but they even out over time. But you know, Greg, I can probably speak to this too. It's like not every year is as good as the year before. And some years you just have a rocking year and you have no idea how you did it, you know? <laughs> so um, I still have to do some research on those particular pieces. I know that, you know, Greta and I were talking about PPP, which is the payroll protection plan. Um, and that doesn't, is not a good fit for my business at this time. Um, but there's other things that, um, I, that I'm going to be looking into um, to kind of stay to stay afloat. I, I'm also lucky that, you know, we have two incomes and that, you know, a lot of my role now has transitioned to homeschooling, um, which has been fun, super fun. But I mean, it really, like Greta and I were talking about, like if your kid's a certain age, it's kind of like your new full-time job to make sure that they get all their schoolwork done. I mean, teachers, I always knew they did a ton. I like photograph lots of events. I get to know every teacher and I'm just like, next, when, when school gets back in, I'm like, what do you want? You want me to walk your dog? You, what, when's your mom's birthday? I'll send your mom gifts for you. What can I do for you? You are an amazing human being. So. Yeah, Greta, can you speak to that same question? How has the kind of financial implications affected you? Yeah, so um, we, one of the things I would, you know, when I said like that we, that I was like, oh man, we own a business. Um, one of the things that I have been doing over this past year is really growing up as a business owner um, and just being like, oh man, there's a lot of things to figure out. Like we're an LLC, S Corp. I would like to like getting your books in order, um, you know, making sure everything is, is all of that stuff is tidy so that when things like this come around, you can actually take advantage of these programs. Um, I think, uh, we had an amazing alignment happen where um, we're doing a mural right now for this really fantastic uh, bank called Bridgewater Bank. This is my little like SLP um, bank, you guys, St. Louis Park. Oh, great. Yeah. And um, so we're doing a mural for their new corporate headquarters. And, uh, and I got a call and they were like, yo, I think that you should apply for this, this payroll protection plan and I'm like they're like what are you looking into all these things and I was like no I'm painting and pretending that nothing's happening because this feels too hard and scary and they were like who does your books and I was like oh yeah I have a great accountant like, oh, <laughs> let's have a meeting with you, you I guess but also your accountant and I was like fantastic and so um we did so yes another shout out to Terry Eggy she's like my super accountant bulldog who gets in there and is like getting the numbers right, making sure that the books match and all the things. Um, but we've, we've really looked at, uh, okay, so we were able to get one of the, um, to apply for the PPP and figuring that all out. I knew it was two P's, but now I know it's also three P's. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, payroll protection plan. Party. Party. I was like, party. Um, so we're really lucky that we were able to get in there. But one of the things that that I was aware of is that, you know, the reason that um, we were able to get some of those funds was because we have a fantastic accountant and a relationship with a bank that's really positive and supportive. Um, and that made me really think like, oh, there are a ton. And also the funds ran out so fast, but there are so many organizations that are not set up or aligned with the resources in order to like to navigate um, these resources that are out there. Um, I happen to have my books and things lined up because I've been spending a whole year hitting my head against the wall, trying to learn how to be a businesswoman. Um, and that's the only reason that, that we were set up to even take advantage of this. Um, another thing that me and Jamie were talking about too, was that like all of these programs are talking about how they are for independent contractors and they're for um, self-employed people. 
but then they're they're covering your payroll. So there's like a lot of things that I'm not quite understanding. Um, and and so there's like all this jargon out there, and I'm sure that there are more programs that I don't totally understand. Um, but it has been like an interesting growing up moment of how do we set up in order to to be good candidates for this kind of support and also to say, okay, not only are we creatives, not only are we artists, but we are also businesses. And we do need to align ourselves in that way in order to keep providing this kind of service and being able to, to show up for our communities and use our artistic skills um, and keep doing that. So uh, yeah, like one thing what we've been doing during Corona times is I just got my like, um, my cert certification thing to be like, I'm a woman owned business. So all of a sudden, but I have been for a long time, but now I am officially a woman owned business. So it's like those kind of things, like figuring out how to get all of your ducks in a row um, in order to, to navigate these times and hope that you show up big enough, that we're hoping that we show up big enough, that we are able to um, ride this out. The different supports are like, oh, we see, oh, you're a business. Oh, we see you. Okay, we're gonna take care of you. Um, and I know that that's not the case for a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. And I, I know there's been a lot of great advocacy work that's happened at local, state, national levels to try and get some of that language included and get those things even so that artists are considered in some of these programs. Americans for the Arts has done, um, you know, a ton of, of work uh, at the federal level to, to try and get self-employed and independent contractors included, at least in some of these programs. But it's clear there's still a long way to go. Greta, you mentioned, like, having, having the language in there does not mean that it's necessarily getting to the people who the language might have been intended for. There's still these huge inequities in, this, in the systems. Um, how about planning for the future? What, what right now, Jamie, you mentioned like you had a big client that wrapped up and now work is kind of dried up. How are you thinking about like, you know, planning for the future? What's your typical kind of planning um, process like? How far in advance are you looking and, and what's that look like to you right now? So, um, you know, it's interesting because we're talking about the business of running your business, you know, which is really hard when you're a small business person because you do the work and then you run your business and it's, 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 it's a lot. And, you know, one of the things that's been interesting about All Are Welcome here and one of the things like Greta was saying, like she was up in her boss lady game and, you know, I am too, because one of the things with All Are Welcome here, and I think one of the reasons why the auction has worked so well is that I've run across these other women who I would say, I, I don't know, Greta, if you agree with this, but I feel like in the Twin Cities business community, like women businesses in particular, like help each other out. Like they are there for you with all sorts of resources and things, which I have found to be like super supportive. And there's also in the Twin Cities with like Finnovation Labs and Luna Startups, there's a lot of places that cater to like social enterprise businesses which all are welcome here is and I know that good space could be considered as as well and they have a lot of interesting ways to um, <clears throat> support yourself so for all are welcome here I know that it's spring and our giant um, spring is our big deal just like just like Greta you know we do all these events we do pride we do Twin Cities World Refugee Day we do Festival of Nations which is such a powerful place to be because sometimes we're the only rainbow LGBTQ kids have seen like in their entire high school career when they go to St. Paul to the festival. And so right now, like the All Are Welcome Here shopping cart is pretty much on autopilot. And for Super Deluxe, you know, I have to figure out how, like if you can see in the comments with Sheila, like I have to figure out how many hours in my day do I actually have open to be billable? You know, I can't take on a giant project for a company right now and say, yeah, I can work 40 hours a week, but I have an eight-year-old who I'm homeschooling, you know, it's, it's different. And I don't know about any of you guys, but man, like the, like, it feels like the hours are long, but the days are short. And all of a sudden I'm like, I am still in my yoga pants. Where, what happened to this day? <laughs> are we leaving our yoga pants ever? Is that, I missed that memo, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's just come like, on, come on. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of like, so I'm planning out, I actually have to find the new normal. And I just kind of wrote this with Sheila in the comments. It's like, we have to find our new normal, whatever that is. And for me, it's like, well, I know that between the hours of two and five every day, I can actually do real design work and I can bill people. And maybe I have to work weekends while my husband works during weekdays. You know, it's, 
I don't think I'm quite there yet. I, I don't know, Greta, how are, how are you finding your new normal? Well, you know, we, um, well, for, for like an example, we had a deadline to, um, well, we had this idea that we were going to get the St. Louis Park mural installed by like J June 15th. We just had this conversation and me and my, um, and my co-artist, Jackie Rosenbush, were both moms and both of our, our, like our childcare is gone now. So she, her kids are, are not school age yet. And they used to hang out with grandma and grandpa, but they can't right now. Mm -hmm. And my kid's a kindergartner and school's out for the summer, turns out uh, today, <laughs> it's official. Um, and so we're like, how do we do this? And so we have to figure out our off days. I have my parenting days and my non-parenting days because I co-parent um, and she's figuring out what to do so that her husband takes over some of the days. And so we are going to get it done in June, but our day, our weeks are going to be like, okay, a Wednesday to a Sunday and then, a, and then two days here and then another two days here. So we have to be really strategic about how we're using our time. Um, and it is really interesting. I like that point of like, well, I can't do a 40 hour uh, you know, work week on this one project, but like maybe we never really could before either. But now we're like, oh, like what I, I have this kid and I've been really depending on school and really depending on after school in order to be able to do these big commissions and do these big things. But maybe that's not going to transition into when we hit normal. Like maybe some of I don't know, spending more time with my kid. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know what's coming or how, what this work-life balance is going to look like, but I think we're all getting a moment, whether or not we want this moment, to analyze how we use our time and, and what actually feeds us. Um, but again, back to your question about like planning and stuff, we usually plan out. I mean, we had jobs planned out all the way through, um, you know, the end of next, like probably out through 2021. And now they're all like, they just started canceling one after another or just, or being taken, you know, it was like, oh, we're gonna put this off. We have to, we have to pause. We have to, we don't know where we're gonna be. Um, and I think our, our studio and a lot of artists in Minnesota were really hit when the Minnesota State Arts Board decided not to um, review their grants and, um, and, and, not, and not give any grants this year. I think they are gonna do different kinds of grants, but they definitely decided not to do their arts access and arts learning, arts learning for sure. Um, and that, that was a huge blow, I think, to the, the artist community who was really planning on that, um, or at least like tr going for that, and a lot of programs that, that are funded by that. So it's gonna be different. The one piece of advice I have heard from like musician friends and artist friends who are kind of self-employed and you know don't necessarily have an LLC or an S corp um, as part of their business, but you know I've been hearing like just apply for unemployment, you know, just apply because the state of Minnesota, you might be rejected right away, but the state of Minnesota is in a position where they are trying to address this sort of thing of independent contractor freelancer piece. I do think you know some of these rules are totally archaic and don't reflect the gig economy that we're truly in right now. Um, so I guess um, if, if applying for unemployment is an option for you, you, that might be something to consider. I'm not sure I can based on the fact that I have like a, another, like with this other like gig going on, but I don't know how long that will last. And, you know, maybe, maybe I'm, a, I'm applying for unemployment in June when the gig is over, you know, I usually for, I don't know about you, Greta, but like, I always have a few projects in the hopper and then like things come up because of word of mouth or because you know a, a new story you know it's just sort of it kind of keeps going there's a momentum now that the momentum stopped it's like well i got to go back to the basics like let's update my portfolio when was the last time i did that i'll tell you it was october 2018 you know <laughs> so you know and, and that's okay i think it's time to go back to some of the basics yeah i think this is yeah it's all put such a everything is now seen through this lens I've found. I was thinking earlier, like, I, I don't feel like I'm doing anything just doing it. Like everything I do is doing it in a pandemic. It's like, I'm not just cooking dinner, I'm like cooking dinner in a pandemic. And it all has this heightened sense of, um, you know, kind of gravitas to it. And I'm wondering what kind of relationships um, to people to things to spaces to to work if you've been thinking about any of those um 
and sort of rethinking how you thought about it before and if this new lens has shed light on you know any of the ways you approach things or people or or work that you think you know will will stay with you can i go first i don't know was this um i i think that this this ex living in during the time of the pandemic is showing me how much i need other people um and so even though you know just like we were talking about how like uh, the the woman business community really supports each other like i'm just like looking at like who are the people in my life that um that support me and who are part you know we're we're doing this thing of where we look at um you know who's in your who's in your corona circle like who are the people that you're sharing your body with right who's in your corona circle and i have like some weird ones where it's like okay it's like it's like my my kid, but it's also my ex husband, and it's also my ex husband's family, and it's also, you know like all these things where you're like because through your kid, there's these you just like look at where what are your circles, where what is your body, what does your body touch, um, but then also thinking of like who are these people that support me um, personally, and then who are these people that support good space? It's just like a way of looking at. Um, I think this is this Corona time is making me see more. Uh, intentionally what what circles are out there that i'm a part of um and how i can nurture those more uh and it's also um making me really value um touch and um and what a hug can be and and especially because again we can't we can't give hugs right now um and then just looking at like as as we transition out of this or even as we're still in it how has the work shifted like this, the work is now important, it, like good space, for example, the good space work feels like it's an important in a new way now. Like it'll, all, it'll have always changed. It'll always be the before the pandemic and the after the pandemic. Cause I think there's just this moment of like, oh, I go to the grocery store now and I'm social distancing, meaning people aren't making eye contact. Is that what social distancing is? You know, it's like, we're going to have to really rebuild this idea of trust and, and, um, and being able to be next to each other, the handshake, the brushing shoulders, we're gonna rebuild our trust in ourselves and our body and our community. Um, and I'm hoping to be part of that work. Yeah, that's well said. Jamie, do you have any reflections or final thoughts on that? Um, <clears throat> I just would want to, um, you know, agree with everything Greta had said. I mean, it's just, we are learning about our humanity right now and our humanity, you know, when I think about all are welcome here, you know, it's, it's not just about your neighbor. I mean, it's not just about your immediate family. It's not about your neighbors. Like sometimes I like to take, you know, the, the, the 50,000 foot view and, and really understand that like all are welcome here. isn't just about people though. I think it's also about the plants and the animals that we as people um, need to be responsible for. Um, and it's also about this planet and this world we need to be responsible for. So there's there's just really interesting ideas of humanity going on. Who who do we consider to be human? Whose humanity is worth more than somebody else's humanity? And and I think those discussions are so necessary right now because even though like social media brings us together, it's also divided some pretty big wedges between us. And I think, you know, valuing the, the, the person at Trader Joe's, you know, valuing the immigrant um, farm workers who are keeping our food chain going, you know, understanding, uh, just understanding just the power and privilege of why, why you are here and not there and, and how you can even the playing field for people, for all people. And, and, and not as an expression of charity, but as an expression of like a shared humanity to move forward. So. Yeah, that's beautifully said. Um, well, we are past our uh, 6.30 mark for when I was thinking of ending this. I could go on, but I want to uh, honor everyone's time here. And, and Greta and Jamie, thank you both so much for doing this, for sharing your wisdom and your creativity and your energy uh, and your homes um, in the background there. Um, beautiful. Stuff. Where's your cat? Show us your cat. Uh, the cats are somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> not wanting to be their camera shy tonight, I guess. <laughs> um, thanks everyone. Um, I hope to 
interact with you all virtually and even more so in person sometime really soon. So stay safe, stay healthy. Um, stay hopeful. Stay hopeful. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.